Hey, it's Webs here with a deck that will corrupt our way into victory with Corrupt Gahoon Priest. I know Kazakazan is on the rage right now, but I didn't really want to do another deck with him right now. I wanted to visit some cards that I've been wanting to use before they rotate out. This was an idea of a deck that I had been floating around with before the mini set got announced. And there were a lot of fun games that I had before the mini set came out, but those aren't really relevant to the current meta. And this deck actually has improved a lot since the meta game slowed down a bunch. Though there is one thing that I should probably mention. Medea Pure Light, whenever I was testing this deck after the set came out, this never came up. So you might as well just use a second Light Shower Elemental. The idea behind using Media the Pure Light is so you can actually go infinite whenever you need to go into late game. And that is another warning that I have to give with this deck. This deck has two styles of games. Games that last 20 minutes, which are frustrating as hell if you end up losing it because you run out of steam. Or games that last like 10-ish minutes. It's a control style deck that you're trying to outgrind your opponent. And it does have a really good matchup against any Kazakazan deck that is floating around. And while it does have a good matchup against Kazakazan, it does share a lot of the weaknesses with that style of deck. So it really depends if you want to use some old cards or some new cards on which strategy that you actually want to use. And like I warned before, this deck has really long games, so you ought to know that when going into it. There are two really fun little interactions in this deck. Because Vander allows you to discount all the minions that are higher costs than him in the deck, you can also use Xanish to discount them even further if they are a corrupt minion, which we are using Strongman as our corrupt minion later on. And we also have the Spirits, or insight as other corrupt targets for Xanish and the main reason why I actually wanted to build the deck like this is just so you can actually make the curve a lot lower than you would normally expect and the second interaction is between Ol Kelt and Gahoon himself between these two if you stack your deck to be the most expensive cards with Lorekeeper, and then you use Gahoon. This combo being seen behind me right now, though you don't normally have your Gahoon discounted as much as I did here, but that was the main combo that I actually wanted to perform whenever I was building this deck, as Gahoon is a really neat card that I don't honestly understand why he was printed in. Priest of all classes, even though he seems like more of a Warlock card, but it is what it is, I guess. And I really wish he had got some support before he actually rotates out. But sadly, I think this is the best way to actually use him in a deck. Though I do think this combo is pretty cool. Because it does remind me of the old Guardian Animal Druid decks that floated around for quite a while. Where you use Lorekeeper to actually stack your deck to always draw into Survival of the Fittest. Once you had a bunch of big minions out on the board. Followed by some more Guardian Animals whenever you wanted to drag out even more. It's a very similar idea. Just using Yishari as the combo piece instead of what you want to draw into. Because you do run a bunch of corrupt cards that will generate you a bunch of minions. For the mulligan guide of this deck, it really depends if you're going first or second. If you're going first, then you're probably going to want to keep a card like Amulet of the Undying in your open hand, just so you have an actual turn one play. Otherwise, if you're going second and you know it is a aggro based matchup, mulligan away this card. The cards that you're mainly looking for are things like Palm Reading, Holy Smite, Renew, insight as easy cards to actually use early on hysteria is really good if you know the matchup is going to be a minion based matchup so you can actually deal with your opponent's minions pretty quickly vander is always a great card to keep in your open hand as he is in any deck he actually is in as this will allow you to discount all your minions in your deck by three before you actually play any others you're going to want to mulligan away basically any other minion in this deck besides maybe Xanish, though you're not going to want to keep Xanish and Vander in the same open hand most of the time, especially if it is a more aggro based matchup, just because you don't want two dead cards until turn four and five to actually be in your hand. If you have to choose between Vander and Xanish, always choose Vander. This is mainly due to the fact that Vander only discounts the minions in your deck and Xanish discounts the corrupted cards in your hand or deck, which makes it a lot better in the late game to actually be able to play her. So if you have to choose, always go with Vander over Xanish. And with that being said, let's go find some games. And for a game against Warrior, we have Vander in the open hand, which is really, really good to see. But Mulligan away the two other minions, because we don't want any other minions in the open hand. Two palm readings is pretty decent to actually have. 
really depends on what type of warrior it is. I haven't really faced that much quest line recently, so you never know. Oh shit, it is actually quest line. Okay, so uh, that makes this hand a little bit worse than it, it actually is, but at the same time, it shouldn't matter too much. It just depends on how or which variant of quest line they're actually playing. We're passing the turn back. We do have a bunch of heals in hand just in case and ways to actually draw into the rest of our deck. Okay, they're going to play Harbor Scamp. Probably going to use Ripe in the Shadows or whatever it's called, getting Insight so we can actually trigger that off of the Palm Readings the next turn if we really feel like it. Or we can use a coin to get out Vander, and I think that probably will be the strategy. We aren't losing too much HP here. Seeing a Xanish right now is pretty good. It does give us a few other decisions we can make. Going for the Vander is probably going to be the correct play here. Just so we can discount a bunch of our cards in our hand and also play our Xanish in two turns. And we should have some ways to actually deal with their minions next turn. Okay, so they complete the first part of their quest line. I'm not really shocked that quest line warrior has fallen out of favor just because of how slow the game has gotten but at the same time it feels like one of those decks that would be really good against a lot of the x people are actually playing right now strong man is all right we don't necessarily want it we can use palm readings getting a holy smite discounting our entire hand then we're going to kill the captain which allows us to get rid of some of their minions and then we can also heal up our vander again Drawing into a, another minion, drawing into Volkelt for zero cost, which is actually pretty good. The nice thing about having Xanish in hand is she doesn't matter if it's in hand or on in the deck. She discounts no matter what. I am so sad that Xanish didn't see more play than she deserved. Okay, so we get a Holy Smite here. We can discount our spells in our hand a little bit more. Grabbing the wave just because it's probably the correct play for this turn. Playing down the light shower elemental and then just going face. I'm going to keep the wave of anthropy for a big push turn that they might do with a bunch of pirates. We should be able to have a really big push turn next turn though. Between Xanish and Strongman and Spirits. Okay, so they'll put down a sword eater. I actually kind of want to do a... My Nazarene Warrior deck with the new Dragon support. Though I don't know how useful that's actually going to be in the long run. Alright, now time for our big push turn. We're going to put down our Xanish. Discounts our Strongman and we get a zero cost one. Along with a Silas, which this is the reason why I wanted to cut out the spirits from the deck. But they do have some high rolly play, so I kept them in anyways. Okay, so cannon near. They're going to refill their hand a little bit here. I'm always worried in cases like this to see a smite. Smite can ruin our day pretty quickly, which is why I like to clear out the board as much as humanly possible whenever I'm facing questline, but it really depends on what we top deck here too. Okay, so it does kill our vander. We get an insight, so we're going to play the Forge Fiend to trigger the insight, which is a zero cost one. We get a Light Shower Elemental, which is pretty decent. We're running out of minions in the deck, though. I kind of wish we had gotten uh, Gahoon off of that instead, but it is what it is. Okay, so they're going to kill our entire board, which sucks, but it's not much we can do about it. They're probably... Oh, they can't play their questline reward. So we're going to get Thrive in the Shadows, which will allow us to get... Amulet of the Undying, we're going to shuffle it back into the deck, getting a hero card, then we're going to stack our deck, because that should make us draw into Ishari next turn, though we do want to get rid of that 7-7 seven, seven as quickly as possible. I guess we can let it live for a turn. We can play Ishari, we should get a couple insights, I'm going to draw a minion here, which gets us Gahoon. Going to play our spirits, getting a good minion for once, and then we're just going to attack into their 7 7, which we turned into a 7 1. Okay, so we do have the Forge Fiend. We're going to play Gahoon. We should be getting. Actually, I don't. Hysterias. 
we get two hysterias, which actually isn't that good, but uh, eight eight on board is pretty decent overall, I guess. We're gonna see if we draw anything off of insight. The second strong man, I mean, it's decent, but it isn't what we really wanted to see. We're just gonna go face, use one of the hysterias, which will hopefully kill at least one of their minions, and it does. We're gonna play the other hysteria, which can only kill one of our minions, and it doesn't, which is really good. And then we have the strong man down, and we should just win next turn. They're unless they're running brawl, we are in a really good position. Okay, so there's the Mr. Smite. I think we have enough minions on board where that shouldn't even matter. Only downside is I don't actually know if we have anything but a light shower elemental in our deck. Though they do have only 16 HP. They did misplay a little bit there, I guess. Oh, 19. Though I guess Amulet of the Undying is a way to generate a bunch of other minions. Now we're going to put down our hero card. And then just go face. I think we're one off lethal right here. I'm pretty sure they're almost out of minions too. So we should just win next turn. Alright, time for a game against Shaman. This hand actually isn't that bad. We're going to get rid of the Lord Keeper. We're keeping Amulet and Vander because Vander allows us to actually play him whenever we have it on turn 3. And keeping the Amulet, if it isn't a aggro-based matchup, allows us to actually just have a turn 1 play. Okay, so their quest line. wonder if their quest line Kazakazan... Because I think that's been seen a lot more play recently. There's so many ways to actually abuse Kazakazan, it isn't even funny. I think Rogue is the class that has the worst experience with trying to abuse it. But you could also, in theory, use Shadow Steps and such to actually abuse it multiple times. Which might be a little fun build to try out. Okay, we're going to coin out Vander. There's no reason not to. Their board is not frightening at all. We're going to pass the turn back. Okay, they're going to use Wind Chill. Freeze our minion, which is fine. It's cool with how much draw power you can actually stick in a deck like that. Okay, so mini mage. Now, let's see what we get off the insight. Oh, I misclick and uh, actually for a different one. I guess it doesn't really matter. Get a light shower elemental. I wish I had done that in the opposite order, but oh well. Because we could have actually played that if we did. Okay, so we're going to play the Elemental, and then we can kill their Mini Mage. And we could kill another minion here, just to get some 3 damage off the board. I'm going to choose the Amulet of the Undying to shuffle it into deck. Getting a card that we don't want to see yet. Okay, so they're going to fill their board a little bit. That's actually a pretty good top deck, just because it can be played here. And then we also do trigger both of our Spirits. We could also use Soul Mirror, but I think... Waiting to use Soul Mirror should be better. Well, that's a card I did not expect to ever see in a deck, but I guess it makes sense. It is a good AoE for Shaman, but I don't know why you would want to use that over something else. There's a few other spells that you could want to use instead. I guess it's more damage for less overload the next turn than a Perpetual Flame, but okay, there's Paul Kelt. We're going to use Insight. Well, that's actually a pretty high rolly, the one there. And that also is a pretty high rolly. We're going to kill two out of the three of their minions. See, games like this is why I like uh, Spirits as a card. But uh, this doesn't always happen. I wish it always did, but it honestly just doesn't always happen. Okay, so Doomhammer. Thrive in the Shadows is probably going to be the play here. Just so we can actually use it and we don't shuffle any cards into our deck. Hopefully getting a uh, insight off of it. We're going to go face. Because why not? Let's see what we get here. Amulet of the Undying. Shuffle it into deck. Light Shower Elemental. And then we can play Elemental plus Lore Keeper if we really felt like it. Or we could just play Light Shower Elemental. But going for both just because we also have... Two spirits in rotation for 
Ishari, which should be our top deck next turn. And they're in a position where they're just going to probably give up right here anyways. And they do. Okay, a game against Druid, which would probably be Kazakhstan Druid. Okay, we're going to mulligan everything besides the Insight away. I like keeping Insight just because... Well, I don't want to see two copies of Insight. I like keeping Insight because it allows us to easily discount it with a Calm Reading, thus allowing us to trigger it and then have it on the following up turn. And this should be a slower matchup, so our hand isn't terrible. Renew's fine. We're going to probably use Thrive in the Shadows just as a way to search out maybe a palm reading. And we do get a palm reading as a choice, so we do have a turn 3 play. It would be kind of cool if Spirits actually got triggered off a of palm reading because of the discount, but I know the overall operation doesn't go in that order, so... Okay, they're going to guess more... Okay, so uh, we're going to grab another Spirits just because eventually we should be able to generate a bunch of minions off of a Yisha return if we really get into a Yisha return. We're going to coin out, I'm assuming, oh, it's only turn four, so Overgrowth. Well, there's Vander, so we shouldn't use Insight yet. We're going to probably use both of them next turn, though. And we did trigger both Spirits right there, which is pretty decent. And I just realized I've been using the wrong Vander. I wanted to use the diamond one. Okay, they're gonna lower our HP on Vander, but then... Guff, I guess? Um, doesn't make too much sense to me why you would do it in that order. I would have actually used my hero power before. Maybe... The, oh, I guess... So they just wasted one of their spells. We're gonna draw a card... There we go, a zero cost Xanish. So we can discount our entire hand here. Drawing into Gahoon for three. So next turn we can pull a Floor Keeper followed by Gahoon. Uh, this is going to get really funny really quickly. Get two more minions there. Then we pass the turn back. And Druid doesn't really have any ways outside of Kazakhstan to actually deal with a board like this. So we're in a really good position. I guess they could be playing... Dogs are on too. That's always a possibility. Second guff. I shouldn't really be shocked about that, but it is a little bit frustrating. And if they were really smart, they probably could have got two hero powers off of that instead of one. We're going to try to kill the 4-8. We don't actually have any native ways in this deck to buff up our 4-8. But they should be fine there. They're going to use that spell to try to kill it but it's again one hp off and we didn't want to see yishari drawn that turn but oh well we get a xanish and we get a forge fiend we're going to play down the forge fiend getting the power word feast just so we can heal up our minion next turn and then we're probably going to pass the turn back because they better have something here or they are screwed Resizing pouch, which has a high possibility of a yog, so guess the weight. They're gonna guess more. Are they getting a little bit greedy here? Because if I generated a yog off of that, I would have honestly instantly played it. Okay, so they're gonna armor up a little bit, and draw another card, and then armor up even more, and pass the turn back. I don't think we have lethal this turn. We can get pretty damn close. And I misplay here. I should have buffed that up. And if that makes me miss lethal, that uh, yeah, it did. We're gonna play the other Forge Fiend and then pass the turn back. The fact that I miss lethal because of one little misplay really sucks, but it is what it is. Can't do much about the past. They're going to do resizing pouch. They chose pretty quickly, so they probably got something good. Yog. Okay, so that is not the Yog that we wanted to see. They're going to steal three of our minions, including one of the taunts. Though I do think we still have lethal next turn, but I could be completely wrong about that. Maybe not anymore. Well, we can use our hero card, hope to get the damage ability off of it but i think it always starts as a healing hero power i could be wrong when i say that we might actually still have lethal we're going to kill the two taunts and then we do still have lethal i guess it didn't really matter all right now that we're through the games let's discuss my final thoughts of the deck so overall this deck does perform what i wanted it to which is finding a good home for gahoon 
And because of how the meta has shaped because of the new mini set, until the meta shifts back to being more aggro based i would say this is probably a decent enough deck to actually recommend especially if you have Cahoon. but if you don't then don't go out of your way to actually crafting a deck like this and honestly the main thing keeping me from recommending a deck like this is given the fact that the games for this deck usually are really really long and i know that's something that not a lot of people actually like to enjoy and it is a fair warning to give with a deck like this especially because it is an off-meta deck, and you probably have a better time playing something like Dragon Priest that has a much quicker game, but has a similar type of kind of win condition where you're just spewing out a bunch of high-powered cards all at once. But overall, I, besides the fact that the deck takes forever to actually go through any games, I could recommend this deck if you've been wanting to use Cahoon and Xanish in some type of deck before they rotate out, as this does seem like the perfect home for both of these cards. And with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye-bye.